So that's going to be our agenda. Is that all good? All right, cool. So uh, how many people are using end-to-end -end of functional testing? Have two arms? Good. So what is actually test functional testing is, and what's the uh, what actually the problem we have with why do we need functional testing and end-to-end -end testing is the reason for it is we don't need to hire people to test, click and test. We actually want to get as close as possible uh, to the user without getting the user into the room and testing it. Don't get me wrong, it's not a replacement for the user, but how we can get most of the job done and uh, get the repetitive task out of the way. To obviously simulate the user and use some sort of a tool for it. And uh, in implementation of end-to-end, -end, you'll find two definitions, which is one is a test runner and another is browser automated tool. So that's where Nightwatch.js kicks in. It is actually our test runner. So uh, tool that controls the test, it's uh, written in uh, JavaScript. Uh, and it's uh, just basically your NPM dependency. So if you ever use NPM dependency, you just go type NPM install Nightwatch and you have Nightwatch on your machine. So the, uh, it's the development been on and off, but it's open source, it's on GitHub, you can contribute to it. And it's actually quite a nice uh, guide once you go in and click on the special API references and developer's guide. So let's just, without further ado, go uh, Rather than going into too much um, theory, let's try the test. Anyone wrote a Nightwish test before? Good. So we're gonna do that. And to actually, I, I was thinking what to test, should we install Drupal website and do that? I was like, nah, we already have one, Drupal Camp Singapore. And uh, I mean, the simplest test we can do is actually go to the page. So our requirements is to have the title, right, of the conference, Drupal Camp Singapore. Let's go to the page. Let's just uh, check if we can load the URL and see the title. Simple. So Nightwatch tests are pretty simple. If you use uh, JavaScript before, so you just do module export. Then you define a number of functions. Here the, there are two, before each and after. Can anyone tell me two more? Judging by this. There is after each, there is before. The difference is before and after runs only once. Uh, before each and after each obviously run before each test and after each test. So uh, after we'll, we'll straight away we'll say browser and browser variable for Nightwatch is um, your client. So how to control your browser, you supply browser space and, and you send it. Whoa. I hope it's only one slide that does that. Otherwise, we're in trouble. I think the resolution is wrong. No. Uh, but for the browser, we'll just uh, say which URL we want to go to. I may. That's better. So everyone can see that still? Do you want to move closer? because uh, I was expecting the resolution would be just a bit bigger. Sorry for that. But we, we chain commands, so here we supply, let's see how we'll go further. We'll uh, supply the URL, which is drupalcamp.sg, and then, uh, the second command we're going to use is wait for element visible. And uh, mm -hmm. can't remove this. There you go. Maybe a bit better this way. And then we say, okay, let's wait until the uh, body element is actually there. So this is, we, we put that in before each. So it means as many tests as we're gonna put in, every time it's gonna run, it's gonna go to URL, type in URL, and uh, 
uh, wait for the element body. And here our first test we're going to put in. So you just put the uh, uh, body of the function. So you supply, you, you tell what's the name of the function. In this case, it's a first Drupal Singapore test. And then we'll write our test. So we wanted to test the title. So there is a, there are a number of commands called assert. So we're going to assert the title and it's going to be a Drupal Camp Singapore 2018. Any questions so far? Pretty simple. So let's run it. Let's pray to the gods of the live demo. So what's happening here is I'm actually contacting the service. So I outsource partial stuff to the service in the cloud. So it goes there and the service actually, the test is on my machine. So Nightwatch still sits here. So there were two assertions as you saw. So two assertions. First one is element body is visible after 900 milliseconds. And the second one testing the page title equals Drupal Camp Singapore 2018. If you look back at our code, so we can see that the first assertion came from wait for element body, right? So it actually came in from before each. And the second one came from when we actually assert the title. So let's actually see what happened when we executed the test. So the first thing we did was actually call in Nightwatch, right? Then we supplied the configuration file, uh, which we're going to talk uh, a little bit later about. And then we provided the test file. That's all we did. I, I wrap it up in the npm run command, but that's pretty much it. And of course, the output we already kind of look at it before, but as I said, the wait for element visible body was corresponding to the first assertion, and the second assertion was actually checking that the title is correct. All right, so let's see how it actually all runs together, how we pull all together. And depending on your setup or your project, if it's a personal one, you might run it on your local machine. If it's something a bit more experimental, you might try something else. So at the moment, we have my laptop and our night, uh, owl called Nightwatch is sitting there. That's pretty much simple. And what Nightwatch is actually, it uh, uses uh, WS3 Foundation uh, Web Driver API. It performs command and assertion on the DOM element of your HTML page. The page. That's all it does. It also has some cloud service support, continuous integration support, where you can connect it to the services, which we're going to look at right now. It also provides uh, querying by CSS and by XPath. And if we'll have a bit of time in the end, we're going to look how it actually works. What's the difference between CSS and XPath, if you haven't seen before. And it's easy to extend, so it's easy to write your own command, easy to write your own tests. So let's see where we're at the moment. So we actually know we have a test runner it sits in our machine, but as we said before, for, uh, for uh, automated testing, we need two things. We need the test runner and the browser automation tool. So what actually automated the browser? Uh, there is this thing called Selenium, and uh, it's free to use and download. It's not open source, though. Uh, it's a web testing framework, and it runs on Java. Uh, you can use it standalone and decouple. We're going to look at it in a second. Uh, and it provides uh, great artifacts for testing. You know, apart from the logs, it also can provide you screenshots. Uh, it's also available as a Docker image, which is quite handy these days because your ops team probably would, if you ask for them, they would install it much faster just to experiment with if you don't have a control over what you install and what, what services you are using. So again. I'll see it's on our laptop, but here's our Selenium server, which runs on Java. And our Nightwatch talks 
to Selenium and says, here's my test, run with it, and then send me the answer back. Did it fail? Did it pass? What happened? So when we look inside what actually Selenium does, it talks to drivers. So it talks to different browser drivers. So it can talk to Firefox, it can talk to Safari, it can talk to Chrome, it can talk to Edge. And there are different browsers provided for different tools. Sometimes uh, as a part of the Selenium team writes them, sometimes uh, I think Cro Google writes Chrome browser. Uh, I'm not sure about Edge, if it's Microsoft or, or Selenium team. So any question about that setup? Good question, and that's what we're going to look at. You actually have three choices. So you can have it locally, everything, what we just look at, all three parts sitting on your machine. You can use uh, cloud services, and you can use containers. And with containers means you can either put it in the cloud and connect it, or you can uh, leave it on your machine and run containers on your local machine. So three ways to set it up local stuff. You install Java, you install Selenium, uh, you install browser, and then you install your browser driver. And then you try to make, uh, make up about a month of time and try to make it all work together. So I'm just joking, but it takes a while to actually get it all up and running on your local machine. There are good guides there, but there is no quick way to do it. I find like it's a good way to find out how it all works, but it means you need to install every browser and the driver for each browser driver that talks to Selenium and then make sure that Selenium is running and not hang, open the ports up um, and then configure Nightwatch to talk to you locally. I've done that before. The good thing about this setup, if you set it up and run it, the browser will open up and you'll see the actually all the clicks it would be automated on your machine. There are links provided to uh, blog posts where you can see the video how it's done on your local machine. So this is the advantage of this setup. Uh, it's also cheap. I mean, not time-wise cheap, but cheap in terms of you don't need to pay for any cloud services. And uh, as I said, it's all executables. So the second one, cloud services. It's the one that I, showed, I just showed you. So all I had on my machine was uh, Nightwatch. The rest of the stuff I just uh, outsource. The most two popular cloud services are Browser Stack and Sauce Labs. Anyone use Browser Stack before Sauce Labs? So uh, second, uh, the, actually the most useful part how those services started is manual testing. So you'd go to Sauce Labs, you'd select, I want Windows machine with a IE6 running or Windows XP with AE6, you would go the spin up machine and you could actually manually click in the web interface and test your browser. And then they, uh, as a kind of, I guess, second generation of their services, they roll out the automated stuff. That's what they charge more money for. Starts from about $100 a month. Uh, free trials, two week trial for Source Labs, I think two week trial for browser stack. Very similar pricing. Uh, so, and they set up Selenium for you, drivers, virtual machines. All you care about is just providing the correct uh, settings file by the API key that they give you. So that's how it works. So again, Nightwatch sits on our local machine and in the cloud we have all the Selenium set up. So here's our source labs, here's our browser stack. And that's what happened. So I just ran a command Nightwatch send it according to the configuration file, got the answers back. Whatever happened in the cloud, stay in the cloud. In fact, we have a results. To prove that, I would go to my source lab account and nine minutes ago, we just executed the test. In fact, you probably didn't know, but it ran on Windows 7 on Firefox 61. And if you still didn't believe me, you can actually play it.
that was not the test, really. We just checked that it is the title. It took 10 seconds. Any questions about the cloud setup? Let's move on. And you, of course, can roll out your implementation of this stack and not pay $100 to Source Labs or Browser Stack and pay $100 to AWS, Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, or your preferred uh, cloud provider. But it means, again, you need to have a look after your setup. Uh, so if you have ops team or if you have people interested in it, so there are options. And the last but not least is a container and Docker service. The good thing about the contain containers is you can either run them in the cloud or locally. So if you spin off the machine in the AWS, you can spin off Selenium server using the container in about five seconds after it downloads, so depending on your browser speed. So, and the good thing about the container setup, thanks to Selenium, you can have all of it being wrapped up in a single container or you can have hub as they call it for selenium and nodes as a separate containers and make them talk to each other so this setup is usually good for a big enterprise production apps where you need multiple nodes lots of browsers i'm still using that in fact the only thing I'm using, it's called Node Standalone. So Selenium Node Standalone. I think that's what it's called. Selenium Standalone Chrome. Sorry, Selenium Standalone Chrome. And it basically wraps up Chrome Browser, Chrome Driver, Selenium in one container. And you can, uh, using your tool of choice, either Circle CI, my preference is GitLab CI. You can wrap it up and uh, just using one command. If you're not familiar with Docker, don't worry about it. But if you are, that's all you need to write to be able to have a container up and running. Three lines. And two of them actually define its name and one of them defined where to grab container. That sits, on a do that sits on a Docker hub right here. So Selenium provided, and the one I was talking about is the Selenium standalone Chrome container. Again, if you don't know about much about containers or the operation stuff, don't worry, I'm not gonna go deeper than that. But this is just something for you to research if you're interested in. So any questions about the container setup, cloud setup, or local setup for your tests? Well, good. Okay, so here's uh, some links to actually to those containers. So you can see the first one is a hub. So just Selenium. Second one, standalone Chrome. So it's a Selenium and a Chrome. Another one is just Node Chrome. So you can have hub and Chrome. You can also have Firefox and other browsers as well. And uh, actually, the, the configuration file, remember the one we provided? Uh, there you define a few things. Again, we're not going to go just a lot of lines, and every blog post you go about Nightwatch would talk about it. So all we're going to say, it defines test locations, so where your test is sitting. Uh, it also defines your extra commands. Um, if, you, if you wrote any extra commands, it would define your automatic local machine where the drivers are sitting. And it actually can be in JSON or JS file. This is I f found out just recently. The good thing about JavaScript file configuration is that you can use the environment variables. So you won't commit your uh, API key from uh, source labs, for example. You can provide as a, a, a variable. I don't think you can do it for JSON file. Okay, so how is Nightwatch.js relevant in Drupal? And has anyone used uh, any other tools that are available in Drupal at the moment? Uh, Phantom.js, yep. Uh, WebDriver, did you use WebDriver? Yep. So before 8.5, so before March, April this year, uh, there was simple test in PHP unit. It means if you wanna write a test for Drupal, just using core, you would need to know PHP. 
Uh, the Phantom JS was used. Phantom JS is another one of those drivers. Like we look at the Chrome driver and Firefox driver, Phantom JS was one of the first one appeared, and it was made basically to emulate any browser. So it was like a very tiny, teeny browser engine, and lots of people used it before browser companies decided now we need to put the, our engines there so people can test with them. So as a result, it's uh, minimal, mi minimally maintained and apparently it's crashing a lot on Drupal CI. So when you submit a patch for Drupal core and you see this red or green things, that's when Drupal CI runs. And if you wrote any of the front end tests, uh, it might crash just because uh, Phantom JS, JS became more and more unstable. So first there was a decision for 8.5 to actually bring the Chrome driver. Chrome driver is what Selenium is using to control all this stuff. So it's like uh, W3C standard for talking to a browser and automating the browser. The problem is with the current latest live version of Drupal is uh, most of the tests are still using Phantom JS. So obviously they're gonna crash. And show me how many front-end developers know PHP. Like, that's another big issue. Especially PHP, and then you can, you can try to teach them PHP, which is fine. Then you show them PHP unit, and they're going to run away from you. That's my experience. So as of 5th of September this year, the Nightwatch is going to be in the core. And what you can do, you can actually go and install Drupal 8.6 core. I did. Here it is. So if you go to the actual core uh, and you go to tests, Drupal, look what we got here. We got Nightwatch. And they even wrote some commands like Drupal install, Drupal login end, and uh, Drupal relative URLs. So there's already a start po point there. So if you're thinking about contributing to uh, yeah, Drupal, have a look in this folder and I read a bit of documentation there. So uh, it's interesting. It's all written ES6 as well, which is good. Uh, all of my tests still running like old school JavaScript. Uh, but yeah, this is how, um, how it looks at the moment in Drupal 6 core. So comes 5th of September, it's going to be uh, up and stable. So you can actually put it in your, if you, look, if you read the documentation, you can put it in your module file, your theme file, and start putting the uh, Nightwatch scripts, like the one we wrote before, <coughs> straight. Right, any questions about Drupal 8? Good. So should we write more tests? Yes. yes. Let's do that. So let, 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 let's see, like for example, how about we'll check if the get ticket, get ticket uh, button is there. So let's do that. I already wrote some tests, but I'm gonna, can everyone see that? Probably not, right? Or is it fine? What did it do? Doesn't zoom, does it? Let me do it this way. So that's the function we wrote, right? So let let's see what um, Nightwatch can do for us to actually. Uh, make it testable, the click button. So we not only need to test the button, we probably need to click on it, right? So. And let's try Drupal Camp Singapore. By button text. Everyone's happy with the name? Sure, okay. Just let me know. Because, you know, uh, the artifacts like uh, test logs, very important. So when your manager look at it, they don't see some gibberish. They actually see, oh, we have a buy button. And it, it is working. There is a, another talk I did 
in uh, one of the Drupal cons. You can check it out. It's more focused on managers and how to sell testing to managers. And it's all about Nightwatch as well. So uh, I'll provide the links there. Anyway, so let's uh, go to actually Drupal Camp Singapore website. Uh, here we go. Let's see what's there. So this is the usual thing I would do for testing. So actually go and expect, oh, I got a div with buy ticket. Whoa. So I copy that. I got buy ticket clone and buy ticket. Well, seems like it's the only class, so it's fine. So it's buy ticket and then uh, there is directly a, a tag there, right? So what I'll do, sorry for jumping too much. So what I'll do, I'll go browser, wait for element visible. So I'll just copy that. And then I'll go and say, whoa. Oh, at least now it's green. Excellent. So let's wait for element visible. And then we have a command called click. So we're going to click on it and provide the same thing. Right. So and then another page should appear. So maybe we should do exactly the same as we did in the before test. So we're going to do that. And here's our test. So we're gonna go to, uh, so this file called two more tests. I'm gonna replace all the previous tests, except the first one, because it works here. So here's our second test, buy button test, and let's run it. So we're going into our cloud. Waiting and waiting and waiting. Who wrote tests for Selenium before? Like using WebDriver. How long did it take you to write? Uh, what did you use? Just direct Selenium test in JavaScript? Uh, yeah. yeah. So how long would it usually take you to write? Well, the test, yeah, for your project, for example. Okay. So you didn't have any a, any issues where you would spend maybe 50% of the time coding and then 50% of the time writing tests? I do have an issue, but um, which I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you later on. That. First, that's, that's why I'll, I'll get on this time to figure something out. Fair enough. We're actually uh, having an issue. So it says buy ticket not visible. I waited for 10 seconds. That's what we have in configuration. So any ideas? It's always good to test it yourself, but if we'll test it ourselves, that's what we just did, right? So we went to the browser. We checked that all the button is there, but we can't see it. So maybe we should go, because Selenium records it all. Sorry, so slow. Anyone noticed stuff before? Who's going to be first to notice stuff? Who said it? Well done. So it's actually using mobile button, completely different button, because we didn't provide the, you know, render it in 1080p on the latest Chrome browser. We provided some ancient Windows system, and the mobile menu is there. And uh, if you actually go and have a look, So inspect mobile menu. Uh, you can see class uh, toggler here, but if you look at get tickets, it actually uses buy ticket clone. It, it hides the other button and the test actually succeeded. So the test was correct. We just, yeah, we just provided the, uh, the wrong thing. So if we'll update our test with, uh, Here at the moment, I mean, you would actually go and put the normal browser in, and your test should succeed. But 
because we ha have time restrictions and all that. It's, it's a good idea to put this uh, selector in a variable as well. And maybe let's see what's happened when we click get tickets and maybe instead of that let's see what title is going to appear. So it goes to Eventbrite and it gets this title. So I'm going to paste this title. So our test is going to look like that. Right? So wait for element visible, click and uh, assert the title and see if that's going to work for our current setup. So a few things you'll see um, when you uh, doing the test for Nightwatch, for example, you'll never see it telling you about uh, clicking. So the click kind of silent. So you can extend Nightwatch test with your own commands. And the two commands I was using on all projects pretty much, one of them called log and another is click log. So all log does is um, logs uh, stuff for you, like um, uh, to, to, to the screen. So while the test is still running, I'll uh, show you the log command. So first the configuration file that I said we don't need to look at. Here it is. And here, uh, apart from the source folder for the scripts, we would also have, uh, no. It's actually couldn't connect to Selenium. We might have a connection problem. So uh, we also have a uh, custom path for the commands. And it, at the moment here, it sits at miscellaneous command. So if we'll go to this particular folder, we can see there are two functions, log and click log. I wrote them. The, the log is pretty simple. It just returns um, console log with a blue information thing, really. It's, Question. So, yep. Uh, previously, the test was failed, right? Because people mentioned it's because of the mobile. Yep. Uh, is it means that the Nightwatch is actually checking the mobile first? Or? No, it means that sourceless setup by default uses Firefox on on uh, Firefox on Windows Seven. That's all it means. Uh, if you would use it locally or in uh, for example, Chrome setup, Chrome would use the latest version of Chrome. Uh, I'm not sure about the resolution because I actually ran into those issues two days ago when, I, when the resolution was by default small. Or maybe it's just a browser that converts a menu into mobile. But we do able to uh, set to test on a certain solution, yes. right? Yep. Oh, okay. So the configuration file here, it's a default environment. So you can set up Default environment, Chrome 64, Chrome 64 at 100, and, uh, 100 pixels, uh, Android mobile, and you can go on and on and on and on. By the way, don't write this access key. I still need it. Uh, yeah, uh, so default is just the default environment, but you can set up the environments, the one you specifically want to target, and provide the um, Either So, for example, if you're going to run it locally, you're going to have different nodes. So, for Firefox and for Safari and for the Chrome and for Edge, you would send it to a different executables, which you're going to define. So, for example, these are settings for defining the Chrome driver, Edge driver and Chrome driver. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, so you would set up some things. And uh, there are blog posts, again, how to set up resolutions as well. And I saw a few people trying to change the resolution in the same test, but I think it's a bit hacky in my perspective. But apparently it's possible as well with uh, Selenium. Okay, so a few more things. So again, log and a click log just uses log and uses different format of the test, which I copied from one of the core Nightwish stuff. And all it does is basically says, clicking something, right? So if we would test those two things, so click log here instead of click, 
and maybe just log to see what log does. Say hello Drupal camp. Okay, let's run it. See what's going to happen. And you saw before the connection. Uh, the previous time it failed, the connection with Selenium couldn't be established. So it might be connectivity issues, but you occasionally would get those on the local setup as well. So Selenium is a bit like they working on it um, heavily and uh, yeah, you might find yourself um, in, uh, you might find yourself in a very interesting situation where it might end session before finishing all the tests. So you need to get a bit tricky a bit of a trickery in configuration on the way you're finishing your sessions. So it depends on the setup as well. So you can see it says, hello Drupal can Singapore and output. And then it actually, instead of click, we use my function, which overrides click, click log and says clicking dot buy ticket clone dot a. So you can actually extend your commands and that's exactly what they did in Drupal core. So again, if you look at the web core, Tests. Nightwatch commands. You can now jump in and as an expert, have a look what they did, have done. It's quite interesting. They're not massive, so you can actually go on search. So any questions about extending and writing your own commands for Nightwatch? All good. Right, let's wrap it up. So, as I said before, uh, you, you can expand the Nightwatch not only with commands, but with the other services as well. There is a great post from previous Next uh, from last week, I think. So they actually uh, use a service called Ashe, Xe, to uh, extend the Nightwatch and the past accessibility testing uh, using uh, the repo Nightwatch accessibility. So the, uh, the link is there, or if you type accessibility Nightwatch, there's only one post on that from previous next, have a look at them. But you can actually use other services with Nightwatch. Um, it's quite an active development as well. So this is the uh, accessibility testing tool. I never used it before myself, so that I'll, I'll just give it to you if, in case you would need accessibility services, uh, uh, accessibility testing. And uh, I would really, 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 again, uh, advise you to go in and contribute to documentation and test. If you don't know what to contribute, try to develop something and see what's like in documentation. And then just go to documentation, click edit, and place the um, header. For example, extending Nightwatch for Drupal Core, TBA. So for, for people who actively contribute to the documentation, that's a good sign what people need it. And because now you cannot leave the comments in the documentation, just communicate some other way. I know uh, the documentation for Drupal 8 is not up to scratch, in development one as well. It's getting there. Uh, I'm contributing on migration and planning to contribute to the Nightwatch. So if you think of something, I don't know, do it on Twitter, but do it on Drupal.org as well, because we need your input as well. We need to know what people need, what they're lacking in the current documentation. So here where it is, ju just type uh, testing in uh, Drupal 8. And one of the links below would be types of testing in Drupal 8 and Nightwish is one of those. A few tips to wrap it up. So for automated testing, I would recommend spend up to 30%. Why I asked the question about the uh, writing tests directly for Selenium. I had a project where we would spend up to 50% of the time because it was just ridiculously slow to actually uh, debug the test. So make sure you time box yourself, but also don't fall in a trap where are oh, we gonna do test later. That's like number one answer, I think, from all the managers I've been talking to. I oh, will do it later, it's not important. Make sure you spend at least 10% of it. So between 10 and 20 is very good. If you can stretch it up to 30, if your budget allows it to, and if you're, uh, like project needs it, so it's not one of project, you know, which you released and dropped it, but something that's gonna live for two plus years, definitely spend more than 20% on testing. Doesn't matter which one. 
but cool people ask me like do we need to do the full coverage how long is it going to take to actually uh, cover the whole project you don't need the whole project coverage i had 10 tests and when drupal 8.4 was released so jquery was updated to jquery 3 it broke uh, drop down menus for bootstrap 3 theme what else was there? The views broke. There was some relationship issue in views and there was something else. So three bugs I detected within just by changing the version of Drupal and uh, sending it to my CI. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not 100% coverage. It's actually the crucial bits of your project that you really need to concentrate on and test. Uh, even if it's just trying to create the node, as simple as that, my give you enough insight. How test was failing? Yeah, how, how so you, because you are relaying on your CSS to identify how is your no, no, I would go and click and wait for the menu to appear. And because drop-down functionality was broken, the menu would never appear and the test would be broken. So do, so a, sorry. So in order to make your menu appearing, so you do the same thing, like every time you go to the you know, developer uh, DOM Explorer and then identify what was the part of it. So is that all? Okay. So kind of. So once, once you get something broken, which was working before, you start looking at what you actually updated. And yeah, so, and then it's just uh, trying to figure out what's actually is broken, what's not. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much how we did it. But we found three bugs before even updating to a Drupal 8.4. Uh, so any more questions about that? No? Okay, so uh, we're gonna conclude, but before that I'm gonna jump on one of my projects, just, a, just an example. It's not the biggest one, uh, the biggest amount of tests, but I'll just show you the setup. So, tests. So here's the test, right? So they correlate directly to a user stories. And if you look at the videos, I would provide the links for, you'll see uh, the, the test correlate directly to a user stories. So for example, this one, as an anonymous user, I want to see homepage with a header and footer mm -hmm. as on the current SLQ website when go to this particular URL. So very simple test, but then they go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then we start logging in as a separate users and uh, creating by just so this is number of tests uh, actually the half of them are empty i just asked my team to do that because they weren't uh, weren't priority i was spent too much time on the actual tasks but half of them are still operating so when i go to my gitlab account to for this particular project i can look at my ci and part of the ci is actually installing the drupal uh, at the moment it's all uh, linked together so getting dependency installing drupal and running tests but you can see I can go and see oh, which tests are running, which tests are not. So some of them are quite big. As a content admin, I want to be able to add file, title, description, tags when I'm creating, editing new document, media item, right? So it correlates to the story. So now I can grab the title, can go to my project manager and say, here's all the tests we actually wrote tests for. Any questions about tests and running in GitLab CI or other CI. All right, let's wrap it up then. So in the conclusion, again, to do an automated testing, we need two things. We need a test runner and a browser automation tool and a test runner called... Thank you. And the browser automation tool called... Excellent. So, uh, and uh, why do we need them? So they're JavaScript based. Again, try to, if you want to get rid of all your front-enders, 
teach them PHP, and if you still got half, teach them uh, PHP unit. Uh, or just give them Nightwatch and they can write the uh, actual test in JavaScript. Uh, Nightwatch open source and free, you can contribute to it. Uh, will be in Drupal 8.6 core and additional services available like Source Labs and Browser Stack. So as I said before, why do we need it? Discover bugs early, test upgrades early. And by upgrades, I don't mean just Nightwatch upgrades and Drupal upgrades. Don't forget you have PHP 7.1 to 7.2 updates. Or if you're still running 5.6, the time is a pressure now to move on to 7. That's all can be done um, using a Nightwatch test as well, making sure just by change, like what I do, I change the containers, send it off to the cloud, get a report if it's actually doable for me to upgrade to 7.2. Maybe Drupal isn't working, maybe PHP isn't working, maybe my, my SQL isn't working. Something might be broken. So this setup will allow you to actually do that uh, and test it. And again, you get awesome artifacts, text report and coverage. You can set up Selenium to do screenshots for you or you can outsource it to those cloud tools. Again, cloud tools also record your video of your tests. Any final questions? Um, I was wondering what sort of impact running these tests had on your build times and if you had any tips for managing that. Yep. So we went very crazy on um, one of the first projects we were running in. It would take 40 minutes. So I'll sh Oh, I might actually get some here. So just an example of a pipeline, so you get the idea. So it went very crazy. So apart, apart from apart from the uh, tests, which were here, you can see Selenium 3.7, we would also have Lintin and Drupal installation and then checking the Composer and Drupal security updates, which again, the most the longest part would be running the actual tests uh, and it would take up to 40 minutes. So you go push your code in, so eventually, uh, we decided, okay, don't run over the whole code base. We defined the core tests. I would take on average 10 minutes. It's a good time to like maximum good time to run core tests. If you're getting over 10 minutes on overall pipeline, uh, cut something down. Another thing is this project would have three massive workflows uh, where a document would go into 20 different stages shifted between six different user roles. So it, it, it was a big project to test. And because we were writing tests as stories, eventually lots of tests became uh, duplicates of each other. So the first test would go and check if the author can send it to an owner. And the second test would go uh, owner to send it to a manager, but because we made test independent, it would go create a document send it to an owner, log in as an owner, owner would send it to a manager, you know, and eventually it snowballed. So then we would just say, oh, why don't we kind of write a document function, send this document to this stage and then test what you need. So refactoring is a big thing. Uh, again, once you hit 10 minute mark on your CI, review, review your stuff, see if you can wrap it up, cut some stuff in by using specific commands. So for example, hashtag uh, run all tests would run the whole 40 minutes of CI, but without this hashtag, it would just run, you know, five core tests like that. It can log in, it can create a document and maybe can do something else. Uh, yeah, that's what we did. It kind of optimized it, but yeah, it was still like full on release. Just testing would take about 40 minutes. So yeah. And if, especially if you have juniors, all juniors do is, sorry, all right. sit and twiddle their thumbs. Sorry for the sound effects. Any more questions? That's it then.
Thank you very much. Test more, test often. I'm going to be sending uh, slides and uh, yeah, so you can go through all the links and the videos as well. Uh, guys, of the Rachidro and clothing stuff happening in the